it's uh, well worth the while to you know, work towards a new way of uh, self-governance and independence. You know, some of the things that old people have talked about for a long time from all, all of our homelands up throughout the Cape. People told us that um, they would like to have people speak from countries that can't speak for country. They told us just because we had a meeting on country, it didn't mean that we had a community view. And they told us that some people who spoke loud about Wild Rivers and other things didn't necessarily speak for country. government has been managing our country for a hell of a long time. It's time now for us to stand and speak for our right and management of our country ourselves. But if you can imagine as people's country gets mapped, what will occur is if any business is being done and we can spatially point it to an area, we know exactly where the mob is, we know how what the protocols are that they want for country. That's when we sort of come together and um, put together a, 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 a way that and build the capacity of our own people to speak for themselves. The European system of governance, where they elect one chairman to speak on behalf of three or four different tribal areas, isn't the appropriate model to set up over Aboriginal lands because it's wrong. You can't have one person from one tribe speak on behalf of everybody when there's four different tribes inside that one area. They were trying to isolate us in a Westminster system type uh, in a program, you know, which, which was wrong. We accepted it on, on behalf of our people in terms of that we were on the homelands actually doing things for ourselves. Yeah. So that's why, uh, for now, with this Indigenous Reference Group, we, we moved the homelands era in after all ATSIC. Once ATSIC was abolished, uh, all the programs and funding, whatever from the federal or the state government, just went out the window. So, for me, and I think to continue the promise of government to all my countrymen, really, really need to work hard between now and then to cement this position that we can't leave. And it, it is important that we do that. Otherwise, if the change of government run the risk of ending back at the start. We need to, we need to have some good outcomes and we need to demonstrate that um, the system that we're setting up as a group here is a positive system for everybody. It's a positive system for government in that they're getting good advice and they're getting the right advice, but it's also a good uh, system for the Indigenous communities and then they feel that they're getting a voice and having input into policy and now part of the policy development. And building a platform so strong that you can't fly it off, it doesn't matter what government come in, you've got a platform you can hold your feet in. And over time what will happen through this process is that will eventually just turn into what we're looking for in relation to the declaration. So things will go from the way that you explain country and, and formulate those ideas about the way that you think it should be protected through this process. It's a process of being patient. It's also a process of let's you know get this model right. Um, and I know that with the current people that we have here from the Coleman Basin and the Watson Basin, um, it's been good, good reports from people on the, on the ground. A lot of old key people and the key people, decision makers for that country are here right now. It's a process of uh, getting it right, but I um, believe it's the right, right way forward. When we first started out, in terms of, um, especially with, uh, with me on the Wenlock, we, um, were the first first lot that the government recognised, uh, recognised in terms of our homelands, which was based on on the Wenlock. You know, so uh, outside uh, outside of what the 
government already had set up or had moved towards in setting up in terms of sub-regional or regional centres. And the recognition for me would, at that time was, yes, you know, this is what we need to uh, achieve in terms of getting our recognition of our bloodline, you know, our governance arrangements, in terms of our boundaries, our management, you know, to that table of NRM. And when we did give it a go, it, you know, it was so viable for us to actually be recognised in terms of our management, our governance, having a decision, you know, to say for ourselves what is needed for the best benefit for us at that table. What we need to do now is to set up a strategy in terms of how the government can benefit indigenous people on the ground. So what we need to do is to uh, work with whatever government that can provide that recognition towards each relevant traditional owner up in the Cape to actually conduct their management, to have their own governance in place, to even have their own autonomy in, you know, in place in terms of their health for their people, their education for their people, their employment capacity, you know, capacity building on top of it, water articulation, power articulation out in the homelands, you know, access. They told us that we should recognise the Indigenous reference groups in legislation, and we did that. And now in the Wild Rivers Act, it actually talks about the Indigenous reference groups, so they have standing in the legislation to report um, to the minister. And after the minister puts out the proposals to the community and releases the map so other people can comment, then we'll work through the Indigenous reference groups to have some real input about what communities want about Wild Rivers. This is the right place to be to talk to um, the current government about how we continue to undo the process of the Indigenous reference groups and uh, use it as a way to empower ourselves um, to speak for the areas that um, people speak for rather than allowing the current regional bodies to speak on behalf of people. For us mob indigenous people like I was talking before in terms of that, uh, from our old people, from our ancestors, we got the map there of our homelands, you know, from them like through, from bloodline after bloodline, you know. All we're trying to do here is to get that recognised by government in saying that we already got a map, we got our own boundaries, we got our, you know, whatever section, maybe you can call it Wild Rivers, you can call it uh, World Heritage, whatever, you know. But we need to have the foundation of the map for all government programmes to come in, you know, on the map, so that everything's all uh, put into place where you don't have overlapping, like the Native Title Act says, you know. We can't just recognize one individual uh, clan, you know, in their clan estate or in their clan boundaries, you know, in their tribal boundaries, because we can't do that. No tribes overlap each other. We all have a shared space you know, in terms of our boundaries. Another man can't go in another man country and say, oh, you gotta do your management this way. That's wrong in our society, eh, you know? You know, what we're trying to do is put that to the table. At the moment, all policies, all maps, boundaries on land tenure stuff, whatever, land trust structures, all make indigenous people fight. Mm -hmm. We want to stop that. I think the value in that is about the, the feasibility and the viability of having a governance system that um, is a lot more functional than the way past governance regimes have existed over Aboriginal lands. Yeah. So each one, like, you will all have that shared responsibility there for that whole river, you know? Things like that. Not like the council, what the government got now is the council has a say over all that dogged, you know, over all that shire. By white man tenure, it make a yumi everan all fight, that's a no good. 
You know, what we're trying to say is that, no, no, everyone here got their area that they operate in, you know, where they live blood or not, you know, where they come out from. Government needs to recognize that, you know. These people have kinship to different parts of different rivers, mm. see? The boundaries of the wild rivers legislation is from the, the basins and how the basins come in. Yes. Their connection to country is on the other side too. So it's something that we, you know, we need to talk about and we, we need to be patient about how we move forward with those, those solutions, but that's some of the, the issues that are coming up um, of how they have representation of those other parts. It's all about understanding. You cannot work together if you don't understand each other. We need to make them understand in a language where they understand. So communication is the key. We all have our responsibilities for our own area, but we still have to work together to work with government to, to make that decision, that final decision. And if you get this right, as we keep saying about getting it right, then it will work.